China, 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 China. Okay, so this is China. China. In the early 1900s, um, there's a warlord problem. The government is not powerful enough to unite the country. And the Japanese are taking advantage of a weak China to try to turn it into a Japanese protectorate through the 21 demands. And um, so there is the May 4th movement and the first nationalist uprising begins. So then the nationalists began to form together and they want to unite China. So they went south and they killed warlords over here so that they could gain power. And then soon they conquered much of central China but over here was still left open. So then the warlords fell and nationalists gained most of the power. And then so the warlords surrender like this guy over here. The death of Sun Yat-sen in March 1925 brought Chiang Kai-shek to prominence in China. The original leader of the nationalist uprise, Sun Yat-sen, uh, dies and he loses his power, obviously, and so he's succeeded by Chiang Kai-shek, who just wants power and he doesn't really care about politics. And he also doesn't like the communists and doesn't plan on um, staying together with them. So soon after the nationalists took control, the communist party um, became popular in China, such as in the south, because it appealed to peasantry so that they could become like more richer. So then they began to become more popular throughout China. And, it, and in Chiang Kai-shek's mind, it threatened nationalist power. Chiang Kai-shek became scared of the communist movement, and he had many communists killed or taken to concentration camps. So the communists made um, a journey called the Long March into the north of China, where they could um, regroup and eventually take down the nationalists. 87,000 soldiers escaped and traveled nearly 6,000 miles on foot in just one year. But for now, the nationalists had the most power within China. After the massacre, um, the communists were disunited and they needed a leader. And so one peasant throws, and his name was Mao Zedong, and he took control. And so he started leading the communists and led them in the long march. So the, the communists began to use guerrilla tactics against the nationalists and in 1937 the Japanese invaded China. Yeah, and so the Japanese came in while the nationalists and communists were fighting just like this and they started attacking and boom, boom, oh, oh. And then so in order to drive out the Japanese invaders, the communists and nationalists had to unite as friends. So they mixed up like this. Yay, happy allies. And eventually, they drove out the Japanese who swam back to Japan. After World War II, they resumed their fighting, and um, the USSR, which was a communist nation, supplied the Chinese communists, so they became more powerful. And the communists also gained arms from Japan, which they left behind when they surrendered. So now the communists had gained power within southern and northern China. Now the communists were very powerful and then they began to make offensives against the nationalists. And the nationalists are really weak and so they cannot resist so they just try and they go duh, duh. And then many of them died but oh. then um, Chiang Kai-shek and his army retreated to Taiwan. Led by Mao Zedong, the communists had triumphed in a civil war against the nationalists. And the communists eventually gained control of all of China, which became known as the Republic of China and still is today. <laughs>